right? To the extent that my fourth year in, the prison psychologist pulls me aside one day and says, I don't understand. You seem like, you're like one of the only people inmates I've ever seen. You seem happy here. And I said, well, I don't have a choice to be here, but I do have a choice in how I manage my thinking and how I manage myself. Place right now, so you guys won't see me a lot because, especially over the course of the next few weeks, uh, because I'm, I'm feverishly working on my book. I'm actually at the place right now where I'm talking about here I was in prison and I decided, like I, I had a realization, most of the inmates that were in prison, most of them had, which one do you think? an optimistic or a negative mindset. Most of them had, what I noticed they had in common was a victim mindset, wasn't my fault, right? What is a victim mindset to you guys? Someone else's fault, right? Or said another way, like happiness is out here, out here, right? Success is out here. In other words, they don't attribute that their results in life are a direct responsibility of their thoughts, their decisions, their actions. It's always somebody else's fault. That was a cold, hard realization because do you think in general, how, how many of you have someone in your life or someone that you know, hopefully not in this room, but somebody that you know that it's like every time you talk to them, it's the same old bullshit problems over and over again. It's the same complaints. It's the same negativity. It's like, it's not my fault, right? How many of you, how, raise your hand if you've got someone in your life like that, right? Raise your hand if you don't. You need to be studied. <laughs> because most people default negative, okay? Do you feel like or do you think that those people, whether they're family members or friends or neighbors, do you feel like they know, do people who have a negative mindset or, or a victim mindset, do they know they have a victim mindset? Like, they're completely unaware, mostly, Right? They're completely unaware. And so, you know, I had to take, I didn't have to, but when I decided, like, I don't want to be like 85% of inmates that when released ultimately come back to prison. I didn't want that. So I had to look at, like, if I don't want that and I want to be part of the 15% that move on with their lives and actually make something positive out of a negative experience, I had to change what? Yeah, I had to change my line of thinking. I had to change my sort of worldview for myself. And so one of the ways that I did that is look for, like train myself to look for where are the opportunities. In prison, I had the opportunity to read as many books as I could get my hands on. I read over 700 books while I was in, in prison for five years. Right? Books on psychology, books on self-help, books on influence, books on how to read people books on finance, books on investing. And as such, I, you know, when I had that realization that I had to change my line of thinking and I had to actually start looking for what can I be grateful for in that moment, would you agree that inside a prison yard might be a, a little bit more challenging of a place to find what you could be grateful for? Yeah, well, and it took a couple of years, right? It took a couple of years, except the situation I'm in, except the things that I can't control, accept the things that I can't change. But you know, when you cross a line and you start embracing, right, to the extent that my fourth year in, the prison psychologist pulls me aside one day and says, I don't understand. You seem like, you're like one of the only people inmates I've ever seen, you seem happy here. And I said, well, I don't have a choice to be here, but I do have a choice in how I manage my thinking and how I manage myself.